Hey everybody, welcome back to DIY Boomboxes in Texas. My name is Phil, your host, and I just want to give you a project update. I don't have a completed project this week. It's just been very, very busy the past couple of weeks. Been doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, the Jeep build was delivered, and the client is very, very happy. It sounds fantastic. We got it all installed in the Jeep. I wish I'd taken some video of it actually being in the Jeep. I just didn't think about it. But let me show you what I've been working on for probably about the last week and a half now. Uh, I've been so busy, I really haven't had time this weekend to really work on it, but I think I told you guys, i got a 20 millimeter box planned, and this is what I've been working on. And as you can see, I've already got the speakers laid out. Now, I want to show you guys this because sometimes when you have an idea for a design, you may have to make some changes because even though things will sound good in your head, and you think they're going to fit, they're not quite going to fit. And I'll give you an example, like right here, you see the space here. I was going to put this rather large uh, port tube, and as you can see, it's obviously not going to fit right there. So I'm going to have to make some changes because these uh, these six by nine speakers take up a lot more room, as you can see, than I inspected. And then right here in the middle, we're going to have a, a Pioneer AM/FM Bluetooth, and of course, I think here comes Mr. Duke. Hello, Mr. Duke. He heard me talking. He had to be on top. I tell you what, why don't you get up here? That way you'd be out of the way. Now, why don't you stay up Stay up there? There you go. Stay up there. Oh, goodness. It's like herding cats. You can't listen. So anyway, we're going to have a Pioneer AM FM uh, Bluetooth CD player. It's going to be installed in here. Um, I'm building this for two reasons. Uh, number one, I've been wanting to see what it would take to build a model this size. This is going to be the biggest box that I've done so far. Now, I know the, everybody's saying, well, what about your Mega Boombox? Well, the Mega Boombox wasn't this tall. It was, it was a little bit longer, had a lot more stuff to it, but this is a lot bigger, a lot heavier. It's made of metal, not plastic, so it's been a lot more difficult. As you guys can see, the, the outline right here, that metal brace was, this was a really hard to take off. And these holes here is where I was trying to drill through the spot welds that I went too far. And hammer marks here where I was trying to really get it. Luckily, this is all going to get cut out. When I cut the holes out, you see the speaker's going to cover the majority of it. Now, what you can do is you can only cut out the pieces that you need. Uh, the reason I took it back off front and back is I'm actually doing a wrap on this box here. Uh, if I wasn't going to wrap it, what I would do is I would fill these holes in everything with some Bondo, sand this out real smooth, and then, of course, paint it. I mean, you're going to have to paint it, I mean, because you see the rust spots here and everything. So I'm going to sand it down anyway. But... Uh, the spot welds didn't come out too good. So what I did was I went ahead and ordered a spot weld cutter, blades, and we're going to try that out next time. Because uh, one of the things I like to do, and this is a little advice, if you build for other people like I do, I never offer anybody anything for sale that I haven't built myself first because I don't know what this is going to sound like. Could sound fantastic. Could sound like crap. I don't know. Uh, we're hoping it's going to sound good. I've got a lot of advice from other guys that have built this size. And we're going to see what happens. So what we did was we went with some Rockford Fosgate 6x9s. Uh, they're 300 watts. Uh, I believe they're 120 watts RMS, give or take. Anyway, they're going to be nice and loud. Um, the review said they have decent bass. And like I said, what I want to do is I'm going to have a decal on this side. Now, I thought about putting the port tube on the back. But if somebody brought up to me, what if they put this, whoever you make this for, decides to put it up against the wall or something, that's going to interfere with the sound with the port tube, the bass coming out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the port tube mounted right here on the side. And I'm going to show you this port tube that I've got. It's actually pretty cool. It's adjustable. And uh, as you can see here, it's got different length of tubing that you can put on there and you can cut it as long as you need. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use these adapters right here so I don't want it going too far in the box because I want this to terminate somewhere in the middle. So while I had it, let me... So what I'm going to do is doing it like this it's going to come out almost right there in the middle. I might do it a little bit further in. We'll have to see but I want to be able to get really good sound and everything. I'm really not going to cut that hole until I fit the speakers. And that's one thing I wanted to show you guys is whenever you have a project like this, 
make sure you lay everything out before you cut any holes. I've taken a lot of time uh, cut these out. I made some cardboard templates. So, so you had it around here somewhere. I think this is one of them. I see I made some cardboard templates there. And then I made this one here. So you see where the hole is going to cut out for the actual speaker and lined it up. Because you can see how close it's going to be here on the edge. So you want to measure twice and cut once as they say. And also I laid everything out you know, horizontally so I could see how this is going to work. And, and I laid the trim piece out for the radio to make sure everything is going to fit just right. But this is going to sit in here kind of like this, as you can see, or I could lengthen it where it'll come out to the middle. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, but I like this one here. This, this port tube got a lot of, a lot of good uh, ideas because being so smooth on the outside and the inside, the air comes in and flows a lot more smoothly, and it makes things sound really good. It's supposed to give you a really good deep throat sound on your box and also ventilate it nicely. And the cool thing is I could put a little vent right in here with the fins if I had to, to uh, make this waterproof. It'll fit perfectly. So that's a nice little kit that I bought. This cost about, oh, I don't know, 13, 14 bucks, give or take. But uh, cardboard is your friend, trust me, because like I said, I wanted to see how the speakers would lay out. And then I went ahead and made a smaller cutout so I can go ahead and lay out where I'm going to cut my holes. And later on, I'm going to go ahead and drill my holes. I'm not going to use this hole here. I'm going to fill that hole in. And because, uh, like I said, this is when I was drilling out the uh, spot welds and I screwed up on it. But let me show you some more parts that I'm using in this build. And if you guys want links to any of these parts, I will be happy to supply you with a link instead of trying to post up the whole bunch there. Just tell me, hey, could you give me a link for this or that? I'll be happy to give you a link. So, let me show you what we're going to be doing first. Um, here's our amplifier here. And this is the, I'll have to get you the number on this one. It's 160 watts times 2. Now, that's at 32 volts. Now, that's very important to remember. Because at 12 volts, you're only going to get half of that, which would be, I don't know, 90 watts, 80 watts per channel. But to get the full 160, you're going to have to put this at 32 volts. So I'm going to have in here a 18 amp hour deep cycle battery, which will give it more than enough power, amperage, and everything to run this amplifier, run the radio, and everything's going to run really good. Now the other thing is, when you do something like that, what you're going to need is you're going to need a voltage booster. And you saw me do my videos about voltage boosters. Now, the ones in the video, I, I learned the hard way, those are good for about 24 volts. They're rated for 32 volts. The problem is I found if you start cranking them up over 26, 27 volts, I've had two of them have capacitors blow on me. And thank God the fuse is blue, but I did lose an amplifier when it blew. So I had to replace the amplifier. So I looked up this one. This one's good for up to 60 volts which is more than enough because I'm only going to crank it to 32 volts for this amplifier. Uh, it's a little more expensive. Uh, these cost about 12 or 13 bucks, but I think it's well worth the money. And uh, it's just going to fit in there. It's going to put Velcro on the back here, stick it on there, do the same thing with my amps. So this is going to boost it up. And the other thing we have here that's important is, now we were having an interesting discussion on my radio page the other day at I Love All Things Radio, and I, I would like to encourage everyone to please join my group. And this is one reason I, I love this group so much. We have some really good discussions. And somebody had brought up the idea, a fact of, do any of you guys install a voltage cutoff? And what that is, is when you're running your project, uh, normally, like let's say you're running a car radio, for instance, your car radio is going to cut off at about 9 volts. But your battery, you really shouldn't run your lead acid batteries under 10 volts because that can eventually damage your battery and shorten its life. And I have one that's doing that right now. It's a nice 15 amp hour battery in my zombie radio. And if you want to scroll down through my videos, you'll see my zombie radio. I've got a couple of them that I built. And I wanted something that would lengthen the life of my batteries. And I heard about this little device called a voltage cutoff. And what it does is you program it to cut off the voltage to the battery at a particular voltage and that way it will stop it from completely draining the battery, which is, which is perfect. So I have one here. I'm trying to get Duke out of the way. Now this is the one I ordered. Um, I like it because it has the digital display. Now there's others you can get that don't have that. 
and you can just use your meter to adjust some trim screws I guess this one has these buttons here for up and down and it'll display the voltage that you want to cut it off now, I'm thinking I've heard a lot of people say 10.2 volts you don't want to go right down to 10 volts it's a, about a good cutoff point so that's where I'm going to cut mine off at, at uh, 10.2 volts and very easy to install you got voltage coming in voltage coming out now some people are probably saying okay that's great but the problem is am I going to lose the memory on my radio when the voltage cuts off the battery well I thought about that and I thought okay what you can do is you know on your radio you have the hot wire and then you have which is the power wire and then you have the wire that turns it on and off well what you can do is you can have your on and off wire coming straight from the battery and then you could have this connected to your power your on and off wire after the battery so what will happen is when this clicks off it will turn off the battery off the radio it'll just connect the battery from the system so it's going to turn your amp off and your radio off but you're not going to lose the memory of your radio stations if you have it on there which is work out perfect so that's all you have to do if anybody has any questions about that I'll do a video on it or if you hit me up on I love all things radio I'll draw you a diagram of what I'm talking about but it's really really simple like I said just like if you're hooking up in your car think of this as your ignition so when this cuts off it turns off the radio but you're still not going to lose the memory on your radio itself so that works out really cool uh, another thing I want to talk about the radio real quick is anytime you're going to use a radio if you're putting in a Bluetooth adapter uh, a little, you're going to need some kind of a ground loop isolator uh, some of you guys have noticed that if you put a radio in your car and you get that hum, or some of you guys have installed a uh, Bluetooth setup, a Bluetooth board, you get that little buzzing sound. Well, this, that, this is going to take care of that. It keeps that loop from happening, the ground loop happening in your system. So, real simple, just connect it to your amp, and then you can get these little adapters to change these from female to male. I have some. And then plug this in to your radio itself, and this will cut out any of that buzzing sound that you get. Make your radio sound really crisp and clean. And these are very inexpensive, maybe $10, $11, something like that. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is over here on the side below the uh, port tube, or I have, below my decal, I haven't decided which side I'm going to put this on yet. I went, went ahead with the, this one here, and this one here is your voltage meter. And this one has a 12 volt socket, and it's also got your USB ports. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wire these directly to the battery. And this way, well, these two anyway. And what I'm going to do with this one here is I'm going to wire this one directly to the on and off switch. And that way it won't come on unless your uh, your radio is on. Well, I haven't decided yet. I'm, I'm thinking about maybe putting three sets of switches on there. Speaking of switches, I'm going to go ahead and go with... Uh, Let's see here. I saw one here a minute ago. It was out of the package. Well, I guess we'll take this one out of the package since I can't find one. I'm doing kind of a Batman theme on this one. So the we're going to have the carbon fiber here on the sides, but all these little oblong shapes right here is really hard to wrap and the handles. So I'm going to paint this kind of a blue. Uh, kind of, you see the, the blue I did in my Air Force box, that sparkly blue. I'm going to do that same blue right here, kind of a Batman blue. And we're going to have these switches, these blue switches right here. And I'm going to have those, watch out, Duke, above the uh, things here. So you can flip them up and you can turn them on. And these are going to be independent of the radio. This way if you're going to charge your phone or plug in a 12-volt accessory or even check the voltage of your battery, you can do that without actually turning on the radio. I'm actually going to put the radio switch right there. Hello, Duke. Now, speaking of other things, uh, as far as charging the battery goes, uh, you've seen me use these before. I really like these connectors. Now, they are expensive. Uh, if you guys give me a link to find these somewhere else, it would really be nice. Um, now, these are they say these are for solar, solar panels, but they work really good. It's a waterproof connection. I use them for battery charging. And you just pop them up right there. And the cool thing is your battery tender, like other battery chargers, you can unplug the clips. And it'll plug in right here to this plug, and that way you can charge your battery with no problem. And if you want to, guys want to make your projects waterproof, uh, it's perfect. I actually use this on the Jeep build and uh, to make it waterproof. I've also used it on some other waterproof builds. Again, these are not cheap. They're about 16 bucks a piece. And if you guys could give me a link to get these cheaper, at least down to $10 or less, 
that would be fantastic. But these work really, really good. You just cut the plug off the end there and join your wires to your battery. And it works really, really good. Um, I think that's it for the parts. Um, oh, another thing is um, the handles are on the side here. So I ordered this handle right here, which is going to go on top. It's the same handle you saw me use on the 40 millimeter. And these are made for road cases, um, equipment cases, um, concert boxes, things like that. Uh, they work really, really good. They'll, they'll hold up to 50 pounds, no problem. Or actually close to 100 pounds. I think this box is going to be close to 50 or 60 pounds. Because these, these speakers are very, very heavy. The battery is very heavy. The battery weighs about 15 or 16 pounds. Uh, this box itself probably weighs close to 16 pounds, so we're going to have some weight. Um, not sure how much weight yet. I know that I, I measured the uh, the 40 millimeter fully assembled. It came up to 40, 41 pounds. So I'll be interested to see how much this thing is going to weigh when we get it done. And I thought about putting some wheels on it, on some casters, but I thought, no, you can you, you can move this with a small dolly. Um, I actually have one of those... Uh, small dollies you see the UPS people use and things like that to fold up and go to your trunks. So it'll, it'll work perfect for that. But if you want to put wheels on or casters on it, you probably could if you wanted to roll it around somewhere. But these are really cool. It's going to be a fun project. Uh, also, guys, I want to show you, uh, whenever I'm doing projects, especially if you like me, you do multiple projects at one time, I get these little plastic containers from the 99 cent store. They're about a buck a piece. I think they're made for shoes. I'm not sure. And you see, I put a piece of tape on here, and I write down what the name of the build is, because sometimes I might have six builds going on at once. And I have all these different parts coming in. So the way I keep everything situated and keep organized is I put all the parts for that build in this little plastic box, and this way you can bring the box to your table as you're working on your project. So everything works out really well. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get this video edited and uh, try to get it up this evening. Uh, today's Sunday afternoon, about 4 o'clock. And uh, Duke says hello. And uh, go ahead and get these holes cut. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is remind you guys, when you cut the holes of metal, metal shavings go everywhere. Uh, so I'm going to do this outside, away from uh, a public area. People are going to walk around barefoot or something like that. So the shavings will just fall into the ground in a non-public area where nobody's going to get hurt. And uh, also, guys, remember to wear air, ear protection, eye protection when you're doing any kind of metal work on these boxes. Um, what's good of having a nice boom box if you can't listen to it because you've ruined your hearing? And you don't want to mess up your eyes either. So most important thing, guys, is wear your hearing protection, wear your safety glasses. Now, your earbuds are not hearing protection. Air, air bo AirPods are not hearing protection. Now, you can get some the earmuff earphones is what I wear that actually will go over your ears and you can actually get some earring protection with Bluetooth built into them so you can listen to your music while you're working on your project. So what do you think Duke? That good information? Alright guys thank you so much again if you need a link to any of this stuff let me know and if you guys can help me figure out where to get these things cheaper than 16 bucks uh, please let me know or if you guys got a good line on getting some cheap 20 millimeters I paid thirty dollars for this one it wasn't too bad but um, hopefully getting this bracket off will be a little easier next time. So thank you guys so much for watching. And again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I've got almost 700 subscribers now. We're really growing. Thank you guys so much. And uh, hello to everybody who loves Duke. Duke loves the fan mail. So give Duke a shout out. And uh, say hi on my uh, videos there. That help, helps me get more hits on uh, YouTube, the more popular my videos get. So thank you guys. And also, if you want to join the discussion where we talk about all these things on a personal level, or you want to talk about your own build, or if you're interested in having somebody, myself, or somebody else build you one, uh, please please join us at my Facebook group called I Love All Things Radio, and we'll be happy to help you, answer any questions you have, or maybe build something for you. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, my next video will have this done for you. Uh, probably will take about a week to get it done. Like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint this part here. Now, this flat part, I am going to put the carbon fiber on. But all these little oblong shapes and everything, I'm going to paint blue. And I'm also, what I might do is go ahead and, because it's really hard to get the carbon fiber here, probably everything from here up, I'm just going to paint uh, jet black, where it'll all just kind of blend in through the blue because you're not really going to see the carbon fiber in there anyway so all right guys thanks for watching and we'll see you next time